Hello and welcome to another video from In3D Software. Today I have another speed challenge where I want to try and create a wardrobe in under 15 minutes that involves some hetic folding and sliding doors. And then I'm going to push this through into production using the new IX cam nesting functionality. So the first thing I want to do is create my room. So I'll go up to my room plan and then click on my rectangular room. And then I'm going to create a, an alcove up here where I want to put my furniture. So I know that this length wall is going to be 3108. And then in here, I've got this return, which I know to be an overall size in here of 650. And then I need my door up in this corner, which I'll just fling to the other side. And then in here, I've got my windows. So I'll scroll down and find my windows of choice, which are these ones. And we'll just put these windows in here. OK, so now that I've got my windows, I can specify things like finishes and styles of those windows as well, if need be. But I'm happy with my room. So let's get rid of the room plan tool. Let's go into a 3D room environment and we'll switch into realistic. And the next thing I want to do is go to the designer tab, click on article designer. And in here, I'm going to place my product and use the stretch function to stretch the product to be the full size. And then I can specify the overall depth to be 625. Okay, once specified, I then have the ability to start dividing this thing up. So what I wanna do is go to my uh, base section and add in a base. In this case, I've got a raft base. And then I'm going to divide this up. So I need a virtual division, an imaginary slice that's 100 mil down from the top. So that's now in place. And then I can divide this up into two sections in here. So I'll use a linear division of one to one and use a division in here to divide it vertically. And then I can add in a panel to act as my filler panel. And what I'll do is just copy that entire panel into the other zone. So I've now got my two filler pieces. I can then go into the lower section in here and then divide that vertically again and use the same 100 mil to one to 100 mil to create three zones with 100 mil borders on each. And I'll put my filler panels into each of those. So I've now got my frame running all the way around. In the middle section in here, what I want to do now is um, add in my top and bottom, left and right. And then I want to divide this again with a virtual division, this time two to one, which will give me uh, a zone on the left hand side twice as big as the right hand side. I can then go into that right hand side there and add in a left hand panel to act as my left hand side there. And then I want to add in a back as well. So let's add in my back panel of choice. I then want to add in a partition that's going to divide this vertically. And I'll choose this one here and divide equally with one to one again. So I've now got two smaller sub zones in here. I can then add in my adjustable shelves so I can just use a simple linear division to divide this equally into multiple zones. And then on the opposite side of that, I want to then have some hanging. So what I'll do is I'll go in again and specify adjustable shelves, but change the type to be a rail and say that I should have dual hanging and the top rail should be 500 mil from above. Then what I want to do is switch to the other zone in here and I'll just minimize some of these zones in here just to kind of pull this up. And in here, I need my right hand side and now I've got my zone. This is still going to be too big for a back. So what I want to do is divide this up with a fixed shelf. I'll use a bottom shelf in this case because I can then bring through some lighting and say that that should be 400 mil from the underside. And then in the upper section of that, I again want my back panel and it'll be the same back panel as all of the others. But I do want to divide this up with some more partitions into three equal zones for my uh, long-term storage up there. So let's go to the and set a partition. 
and I'll choose this one that's brought through some lights on my petitions as well. Okay, so into the lower zone now, what I want to do is use a divider in this area as well. And what this will allow me to do is create a, an upper hanging and a lower draw zone. So I'll use a virtual split again, 700 millimeters from the bottom this time. So I know that that's a fixed dimension. And in that lower section, I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to go to the article zone and I'm going to tell it to bring through a pre-built article. This will put my product into that zone and then stretch that parametrically to fill that zone. I'll do a separate follow-up video on how I made this product, so keep an eye out for that. Then what I want to do is go up into my main zone up above and add in my back panel again. And again, I'll just swap that back panel out to be my preferred one of choice. And then I can then add into that same zone in there another hanging rail which would be 50 mil from above. I can then click tick and we can have a look at the results. Okay, so you'll notice that I've got really big draws in this pre-built product that I brought through, but that's okay because if I go into a wireframe view, you'll notice that there is actually a petition behind my draws and I can increase my level of detail from a level two to a level six and that will refresh the build and pull through my internal draw boxes. And as you can see, I've got one common draw front that spans my three draws. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is put some uh, folding and sliding doors. So Hetic um, have a product called Wing Line 77, which is a folding and sliding system, which will look great on this wardrobe. So I wanna put this across the front, but in order to do that, I'm gonna to have to shift that entire zone back here so that it avoids the, uh, the handles. So what I'll do is I'll modify the product again and go to, uh, go to that zone so let's click modify product and then by going into this middle zone in here and scrolling down till I find the gap that I want to be in I can then add a inset value of 90 millimeters to this so now when I click tick it will refresh and it will show that the uh, the draw pack has been pushed back into the carcass 90 millimeters to avoid those hinges clashing. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is add on my doors and drawers. So again, let's just modify this quickly. And what I'll do is go all the way up to uh, the main section in here. So if I go to my split, I've got my right hand side and my left hand side. I'll click on the front here and add in a folding and sliding door. So I've used the iFern data that's provided with the system to download the entire HETIC catalog here. And that's allowing me to pull through all of the various fittings and, and hardware that HETIC supply. I'm going to drop in my four door on this side and you can see it's split that up into four equal doors for me. And then I'm going to go on to the other side and I'm going to add in the same folding and sliding, but this time it would be a two door. So now that I've got those in place, let's just go and click tick on that again. And the system will rebuild all of this. You can see it's brought through my doors using the same front materials as my fillers. And if I just switch back into a wireframe view, you can see it's pulled through the sliding door track gear as well as the hinges and the central pivot hinges as well. Um, one thing to just alter here quickly is this little filler needs to come down. So let's just click on that part, go to the trim and tell that to come down to the bottom so it's flush with my door because I want that to overhang the same amount as the door. I'll click on the other trim on the other side and we'll do exactly the same thing. Okay, now I like the interiors of this. This looks good, but I think I'd like my carcass work to match my doors. Um, so if I open up the inside by using the animate function, you can see it will slide open my doors for me. And here I've got my uh, internals and I'll do that on the other side as well. 
and I feel like when I'm using my nesting, I might want to get all of this out of one material. So let's go to the options for the product, go to the data for the carcass, and in here you can see that the front is set as 19 millimeter, uh, 19 millimeter melamine lava and the carcass is using a white material so what i want to do is do a quick change to my carcass material so that that's also 19 millimeter lava and i'll just click tick on that again the system will rebuild it calculating that new material usage and once built and i open up the inside we can see it's now using the same material to the inside as well next thing is maybe we should have some mirrors on the front here so once we're dressed we can straighten our tie up a little bit so let's close our doors and use the article related variables to now change our door style so i'll go to wardrobes and then doors and then in here i can choose four mirror door and then click apply and that will reload the system again but this time it will change out the doors for ones that have got mirrors applied so now that i've got my mirrors on here the next thing that i want to do is save the job so let's save this order and in here we'll call this wardrobe for mirror and once saved i can then set up the uh, views for the renders so what i want to do is click to the front go to perspective i'll zoom into my room in here okay that's looking pretty good and now what i want to do is go to my presentation settings i'll say that this is a full hd render using medium quality we'll go to the exposure settings in here and suggest that this is using a gypsum crater and then what I can do now is go to my light settings in here and pull in my lights. So I'll just change my light settings from being a standard web light to being a preset. And let's just make that a little bit of a warmer light, I think. Let's do a quick test render. And I'll pull up my settings. Okay, so I just need to alter my carpet because my carpet looks a little bit big. But other than that, I think we're not looking too bad. Let's drop that down. Might make it a little bit brighter as well. Let's go to our materials and go to my carpet in here. And we'll just change the texture size there. Okay, and I think we'll just orbit around ever so slightly, maybe get a slightly better view and increase that brightness. Okay, so this isn't looking too bad. We'll wait for the render to finish, shouldn't take too long. Let's save that to our folder. We'll open up our internals, show the customer what we're going to get, and we'll run that render again. We can see our internal lighting systems, where the mirrors are going to be, and once that's finished, we'll save that again as well. Okay. We don't have long left, so let's just go to our job and we'll save the order, generate our CNC data and push this into production. Here's my cam nesting. I'll click start. We're generating all of the CNC files and I must will now start to use the internal optimization engine to get, to get my best sheet usage and then the files will be directly ready to be put onto the CNC machine. So 
we're coming up on 15 minutes here hopefully we'll be able to get it just in time Okay, so here's our final nesting report. And if we go through, you can see that these are all of my parts. And when we get down to the bottom, we have all of our nested sheets ready to be sent. Let's go into a 2D wireframe view from above. You can see in here, we have our material usage. We've got our draw box material, carcass and doors. And just to uh, show our customer the final settings, let's just go to the new IX showcase functionality within 23. We'll go to the output and create an IX showcase. So this new feature is great because it'll allow you to show the 3D design to the customer very quickly. It's generated uh, an upload link that I can then email to my customer. If I just click on this link now, it will bring up the 3D model that I can then orbit around and then look at on any web browser. What's useful about this is it allows me to also see in X-ray mode all of the internals as well. So 16 minutes, 47 seconds. Sorry it took so long, guys. If you've got any questions, if you'd like to know more, please let me know and keep an eye out for the follow-up video showing the internal creation of that uh, dual-fronted draw pack. Merry Christmas. Speak to you soon.